Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. Ohio Bigfoot Encounters Report number 37259, Class Alpha Nearest Town, West Union Nearest Road, Unity Road Observed I was taking my four-year-old cousin for a ride on the ATV. We were climbing an old cattle road. It was a hill. About halfway up the hill, I heard this loud thumping noise. I turned around and saw this huge, brown, hairy man-like creature running up the hill after us. He was at least ten feet tall. In its hands was what appeared to be a small log. I was only going about ten miles per hour, and it was fairly close behind us. Finally, we got to the top of the hill into this grass opening, and I laid on the gas. I was up to about 30 miles per hour. It wasn't close to us, but it wasn't far away. At the time, we were almost out of the field. It hurled the log at us. It landed fairly far away. I came back the next day, and the log was not there. Also noticed, at least 10 feet tall, large strides, tremendous arm strength. Earlier in the day, found where it it had knocked down a bunch of trees and moss, leaned up against a big tree. Could be a home, I'm not really sure. Other witnesses, four-year-old cousin. Other stories, no. Time and conditions, about 5.30 p.m., fair skies, mid-60s, no precipitation. Environment, temperate, deciduous forest. Bottom of hill is by a creek. At top of hill, huge grass field. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Steve Nystrom. I was able to meet with the witness regarding his encounter in late December 2013. During our meeting, several interesting details emerged regarding his two encounters. The witness was taking his four-year-old cousin for an ATV ride on the back of his family's property on one of the old cattle trails searching for possible locations to set up blinds for the upcoming deer hunting season. It was mid-November around 5.30 p.m., and the sun was starting to set, so the witness decided to turn the ATV around and take his cousin back home. As they were riding up the hill on the ATV, the witness heard a loud, thumping noise. Not sure what it was, he turned around and saw a large, dark brown, hairy, man-like creature about 10 feet behind the ATV, chasing them up the hill. Due to the incline of the hill and the ruts on the trail, the witness could only travel about 10 miles per hour. <clears throat> he was able to get a look at the Sasquatch, which he estimated to be around 10 feet tall with long hair covered arms, having a large head with no visible neck, two large eyes, and a flat nose as well as a possible mouth. His four-year-old cousin also turned his head around to see what was going on and pointed to the Sasquatch for a few seconds as they were fleeing. As they approached the top of the hill and were entering a large field, the road conditions improved and the witness hit the throttle and eventually got the ATV up to around 30 miles per hour. At this point, he was able to put some distance, but surprisingly not much between the Sasquatch and the ATV. As they were exiting the field and about to get on the dirt road leading back to the house, the Sasquatch hurled the small log it had been carrying at them, but it did not come close to hitting the ATV. When the witness and his cousin arrived back at his house, he was still stunned by what had just happened. However, his four-year-old cousin thought it was really cool being chased by the big hairy man and could not stop talking about it. He still mentions it periodically to this day. The witness offered to arrange an interview with his young cousin, but I had to decline due to time constraints. The witness had a second Sasquatch encounter about a year later in the same general area. In November 2013, he drove his ATV out on the same trail where he had the Sasquatch encounter the previous year to find a location for his blind a few days before deer season. The witness was alone this time with just his portable blind, deer rifle, and a set of binoculars. He decided to set up his blind on the top of a small hill overlooking an active deer path, approximately 200 yards southwest off the trail where he had seen the Sasquatch a year before. 
When the witness finished setting up the blind, he sat down and started to scan the area toward the deer path when he noticed what appeared to be a large, dark gray, hair-covered head staring at him from behind a huge tree. When the witness reached down to grab his binoculars, he briefly saw the head of the creature before it departed. The witness showed me the large tree that the Sasquatch was hiding behind. A few yards behind the huge tree, there was a small creek embankment, which combined with the brush provided the Sasquatch with fairly good cover and concealment to prevent it from being observed. In addition, during my investigation with the witness, I also noticed a dead deer in the open field not far from this, his two Sasquatch encounters. I asked the witness if he had noticed anything unusual about any of the dead deer that he had found on his family's property over the years. The only thing unusual that he could recall was at the time of his two Sasquatch encounters, there were some deer carcasses in the vicinity of the sightings that had the legs completely ripped off. Also, there was no apparent wounds from gunshots or arrows on the dead deer, which was more typical during hunting season. Based on the details that he provided and his private demeanor, I strongly believe that the individual is a very credible witness, who did in fact have two distinct Sasquatch encounters on his family's property. The Adams County region of southwest Ohio has had a number of reported Sasquatch encounters over the years. There is also an abundance of food, water, and wooded areas that are capable of sustaining a Sasquatch population. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help.